Hello everyone, welcome to the digital platform of Bhavyam Classes. Today we will cover the third topic which is Indus Valley Civilization. Indus Valley Civilization, we uh, know Indus Valley Civilization with different different names like Bronze Age Civilization, Saraswati Civilization, Harappan Civilization or Harappan Culture. So we will study, see we get fla uh, we get the facts in different different books right you may refer any book you will find different uh, you will find almost same facts there but here i'm going to teach you how to study and how to interpret those facts like if it is known as harappan civilization or bronze age civilization so what is the reason behind that why it is known as the bronze age civilization it is known as the bronze age civilization I'm sorry, it is known as the Bronze Age Civilization because here we find bronze is what? Bronze is a metal. Bronze is alloy of copper plus tin. Tin, fine. And then we get bronze so because of the because we find bronze uh, the bronze tools or you can say the artifacts made of bronze here people here people you can say uh, equip themselves or they got to know the technology how to make bronze so we find the uh, evolution in metallurgy industry or in metallurgy they were extreme they were you can say they were master in the bronze metal and they used to make artifacts out of bronze metals fine so because we find a lot of bronze metal in the face of indus valley civilization See, if we study, when we study Indus Valley Civilization, we refer to the uh, art, art and architecture, craft, religion and all those things. But when we study, so we study specifically the mature age. So when we study the mature Harappan Civilization, it stands from, basically it stands from 2600 BCE to 1900 BCE. Fine. It stands from 2600 BCE to 1900 BCE. So I told you it is known as the Bronze Age Civilization because we find a lot of artifacts made up of bronze during this period or during this in this civilization. Fine. Then we get to know another name Harappan Civilization. Why it is known as the Harappan Civilization? It is known as the Harappan Civilization because the first site to be excavated was Harappa. That was near uh, river Ravi. So it is known as Harappan civilization because it was the first site to be excavated. Fine. So it was the first site to be excavated. So that is why it is known as the Harappan civilization fine it is known as the Harappa, Harappan civilization because Harappa was the first site to be excavated now we come to Saraswati word Saraswati civilization it is also known as the Saraswati civilization because we find a lot of sites we find a lot of Harappan site or you can say Indus Valley sites on the bank of river dried river Saraswati during that time, like because of the tectonic movements and all the climate change, the the portion of Saraswati River, it, the river dries, you know, river changes its course because of the tectonic movement. We see earthquakes happening, we see earthquake in Turkey and Syria. So all these things happen because of the tectonic movements. So we find a lot of sites in the river, in the banks of river Saraswati and we call it as Saraswati civilization. Earlier, like more historians like they uh, debate or they fight over the name they say no it is known it should be known as the harappan civilization some say it should be known as the indus valley civilization some says uh, it should be known as saraswati civilization and some says that it should be known as the bronze age civilization so now indus valley civilization now why it is known as the indus valley civilization as i told you saraswati civilization why because it was a lot of sites were there on the banks of Dried River Saraswati. Fine. 
Now, why it is known as the Indus Valley Civilization? It is known as the Indus Valley Civilization because a lot of sites have been found on the bank of river Indus or Sindhu. In Hindi, it is known as the Sindhu Ghati ki Sabhita and in English, we call it as Indus Valley Civilization. So, it is known as Indus Valley Civilization. So, I told you why we, uh, why we get so many name of this, uh, why we get so many name for this civilization, fine. So, on the Saraswati, uh, as I told you, fine. Uh, as I told you, like, uh, we, we find a lot of sites on the Ghagra, Ghagar, Hakra Valley, which is now the present, uh, which is uh, we know, we refer to as the Saraswati. New name is Saraswati and the old name was the Ghagar. So that is why we find a lot of sites uh, on that particular uh, river, uh, bank of that particular dried river. So this terminology ends. Fine. Now, two things are very, very important. Two excavations. Excavations. So, excavation number one of Harappa. And excavation number two of Mohan. Jodaro. Or Mohan Jodaro, it is uh, like two. Uh, you will find a lot of like different uh, uh, different ways the name has been written. Like some people sometimes it is written uh, somewhere it is written as Mohan Jodaro, somewhere it is written as Mohan Jodaro together. Fine. So the excavation of Harappa. Fine. The excavation of Harappa has been done by the Dayaram Sahani and the excavation at the site Mohan Jodaro has been done by the R.D. Banerjee. Fine. So these two excavations are important. So we find questions in the exam paper also. Fine. So uh, as I told you the uh, as I told you the excavations now we will study like in how many parts we study uh, Indus Valley Civilization or Harappan Civilization so we study Harappan culture in three different parts one is your early Harappan culture fine then is your mature fine mature Harappan culture and then comes your late Harappan culture fine so we study Harappan culture in three parts on the basis of the progress in pottery on the basis of progress in town planning on the basis of progress on the basis of progress of trade we bifurcate or we divide the Harappan culture into three different parts first is your early then your then comes your mature and then comes your late Harappan civilization fine so if we talk about the map fine if we talk about the map uh, so if I make if I try to make the map of India so this is the current map of India fine then this portion is your Pakistan. So we find a lot of sites. We find a lot of sites on this particular part. Fine. This particular part is our northwestern frontiers. Fine. Northwestern frontiers or northwestern part. So we find a lot of sites over here. So here comes our Jammu Kashmir, Rajasthan, Gujarat, 
somewhere maharashtra stick is somewhat maharashtra then your haryana then your uttar pradesh and uh, all these states himachal pradesh also but we do not find a lot of sites over there uh, we find the important sites find uh, the important site that has been excavated and that has been studied in a very deep manner so all these sites are situated over this particular this particular you can say uh, on this particular land so we find a lot of sites that are that are present on the northwestern part of indian subcontinent fine so this is your map next we come to the important parts that ends of civilization it it basically means this it basically means like which is the northern most site fine which is the southern most site which is the eastern most uh, most site and which uh, and which site is the western most fine so the eastern most site is your uh, alamgirpur in up so this is your eastern most site is it is very very important you get a question in exam like which is the easternmost site of the indus valley civilization so this is your alamgirpur is your easternmost site and then comes your sutka gandor which is your western most site of indus valley civilization then comes your northernmost site northernmost site is in jammu kashmir that is manda or mand so this is your northern most site and then last is your southernmost site daimabad which is in maharashtra is your southern southern most site fine so one question is prepared like it is there are a lot of chances a lot of chances that you will get the question from this particular slide or this particular topic like which is the southern most or which is the northern most which is the eastern most and which is the uh, northern most fine so it is very very important i have mentioned the rivers also so mand is situated on the river chinam uh, sutka gandor is situated on the river dasta daimabad which is in maharashtra it is situated in the banks of river godavari now we come to important mature harappan sites so as i told you when we study we study the mature sites fine we we study the mature harappan sites so when we study the mature harappan sites we basically or we specifically concentrate on four five sites that are harappan uh, that are uh, that is harappa your mohanjodaro your sutka gandor your uh, kali bangan your banavali your shortugai shortugai is important from a like trading point of view it is very very important your kali bangan your lothal chanhundar and harappa so these are the mature harappan sites that are very very important now when we study about the late harappan sites we specifically refer to <coughs> rojadi we refer to dhola vira we refer to rakhi gadi we refer to rangpur fine so dhola vira is very very important site and rakhi gadi is also very very important site of the late harappan culture or late harappan period so now we come to our like how do we get to know like you must we you must have wondered ki scientists to or archaeologists to must have find a lot of sites so how they come to know that these sites belong to specifically this site belong to the period of indus valley uh, culture or indus valley civilization so there is a checklist that archaeologists follow so this checklist has basically important uh the uh, this uh, checklist has a certain type of uh, pottery this checklist had uh, has a certain type of uh, brick find the measurement of brick is the most important thing like if you find that particular brick or houses or any kind of structure made up of that brick we basically refer to as the indus valley we refer to that site that its site must have belonged to the indus valley civilization or part of that particular civilization fine so now is your pottery 
most important thing terracotta fine so terracotta clay terracotta clay is like basically when you find you when you see the sand at the purest or the unfiltered you can say the filtered sand then you bake it and then you make the clay that uh, that is whole another process so when you make uh, so terracotta figurines or terracotta uh, terracotta clay uh, artifacts or motifs made up of that particular clay have been found and in huge number we have, we find these in huge number in specifically in the period of indus valley civilization now next is your standard brick size that is the ratio is to, the ratio stands like 1 is to 2 is to 4 so that is the ratio so when we whenever we find the brick of this ratio we refer that side that it must have belonged to the indus valley civilization or indus valley phase fine next is your bronze when we find the bronze metal when we find the when we find the copper artifacts then also we refer to the we refer that particular artifact or that must have belonged to the indus valley phase so this is your checklist like red pottery with black designs fine red specifically red pottery with black designs then terracotta cakes standard brick size and your different types of copper and stone artifacts so this is your checklist from which the archaeologists get to know that this particular site belongs to the indus valley civilization then we come to the this is our historian. This is one historian. His name is Jim Sheffer. So we refer to as I told you that we study Indus Valley in three phases. We study early, early, mature and late Harappan city or late Harappan civilization. So specifically we refer to the, uh, so what uh, Jim Sheffer says. Jim Sheffer says the Indus Valley civilization, if we refer to that particular word that refers to the uh, that refers to the phase from neo chalcolithic stage to the decline of Harappan civilization. So, for him, okay, for Jim Sheffer, Jim Sheffer, the Indus Valley civilization or the period stands from the neo chalcolithic neo chalcolithic to the decline decline of indus valley civilization fine so neo chalcolithic age uh, neo chalcolithic after the neolithic age comes the chalcolithic age so when we refer to the upper chalcolithic or you can say not uh, specifically means when the chalcolithic age started we also refer to as we also refer to chalcolithic age to the uh, as the neo chalcolithic age because here also we find a lot of less of copper tools and a lot of stone tools and we find the composite tools also so one part uh, is to be of copper and another part is to be of the our stone so that is why we refer to that particular age as a neo chalcolithic age fine so we find uh, so for, he says that indus valley civilization stands for the period that is between the indus uh, that is from the neo chalcolithic age to the decline of uh, indus valley civilization then he referred to three words. He refers to the regional era, integrational era and localization era. Fine. So he says the early, he used early Harappan phase or uh, early Harappan culture. For early Harappan culture, he used the word regional Era, fine. He used the word regional era. Then for the mature, mature Harappan civilization, late Harappan civilization. So for late, he used the word integrational, integrational era fine and he used the word uh, lo sorry he used the word localizational local and here in the gration era fine 
integration era it means the integration and the localization when the localization happen or when they decline like after the decline of harappan cities people it is like it is theory it uh, some people says that it was a gradual decline and some people says that uh, some historian says that it was a sudden decline so when we mean the gradual decline we have the evidence of some sites which shows uh, which shows gradual decline we find some sites which shows the uh, which shows a uh, sudden decline so both the theories are correct but we uh, what uh, but we cannot tell like okay fine this uh, this was the harappan civilization declined it gradually or or the whole civilization ended it uh, suddenly fine so uh, so he uses so her, a question can be asked also see whatever a material i'm making i'm not making from the internet fine i'm specifically referring to some standard books and then making this uh, then making this particular slide or study material so whatever i'm writing i have taken it from two three books and then have compiled uh, then i have compiled it to uh, in these slides so these are very very important uh, so these are very very important points and there are chances that you will get questions from all these topics and all these things so a question can be asked like who or uh, you can uh, question can be asked like which historian has used the word regional era integrational era or localization era for the for uh, for the uh, indus valley like zation so he is jim shaffer fine now a more uh, now um, one more important historian which wh whose name is m r mughal so m r mughal what he did he collected the artifacts he collected all the evidences archaeological evidences fine he collected all the archaeological evidences of the late harappan or you can say uh, of the mature harappan and from pre harappan to uh, he collected from the pre harappan to mature harappan and then he compared those things or those artifacts and he told the difference between these two and relationship between these two levels like what was the what was like what kind of pottery used to be there on pre harappan period what what kind of pottery used to be there on the mature harappan period or late harappan period so he compared and he told the uh, and he told the relationship between these two, uh, these two pre and uh, late Harappa, pre and mature Harappan cities or culture and the differences also. So these two, these two historians are important. Fine. Now we come to our the uh, now we will study the general feature of mature harappan settlements so general features means like what is the uh, so general features means what do we get to like how do we classify like these uh, on the uh, not, like on the general basis like these sites belongs to the uh, these sites belong to harappan or like pre harappan phase or mature harappan phase or late harappan phase fine so when we talk about the general features what do we find what do we find we find first of all we find the planned uh, settlement fine so it is it is the most striking feature of our civilization or indus valley civilization that we find that we find the planned settlement which we are not able to achieve yet it means like if we talk about today's era what we see we see a uh, road has been constructed like suppose this is a city fine this is a city so in harappan cities what happened the drainage was planned drainage fine the drainage was planned fine so and now what happened a part of a piece of land is there people built their houses fine there is a narrow road there is no road defined fine so what happened if today the government wants to expand what they do what they do they break the house they purchase the house they break the house and then they construct the road but in that particular era the roads were already constructed fine they were planned they used to lay drainage before making the uh, before making the houses or before making the city or the town so in today's world, world uh, what they will do a civilization like a town or a small city or people have started living in particular land what they will do the government will come and government will say oh my god uh, the roads will be constructed and then they, what they'll do oh my god the road has been we have to break the road because we forgot to uh, we forgot to uh, we forgot to make the sewer line 
so then after 20 30 years of living they will get the sewer line they will get the toilets they will get the sanitation fac uh, sa uh, sanitation facility so all these were you all these things used to be there so now so that is why it is very important or uh, that is why the particular city is very important because it was planned it tells us about the you can say people um, people thought about the sanitization people thought about the uh, people thought about sanitization people thought about uh, the uh, proper structure people thought about the uh, hygiene fine so like before constructing the house uh, before constructing the house they took care of the privacy they took care of the ventilation so in today's world we hire architecture for all these things but during that time we find the whole city and a lot of cities are being planned and they uh, they all have the features in them so how they got to know how they got to know the uh, ventilation is very important how they got to know the privacy is very important so this so all these features attract the historians and attract us to study the Indus Valley civilization so they have they the settlement were planned first important thing they were planned fine so if we talk about that like i told you about several sites i told you about mohan jodaru i told you about harappa i told you about kali bangan dhola vira and all these things so these sites have more or less they have some they have a uh, like similarity but some sites are very very uh, different and those differences make them important like uh, the all the sites have two uh, the all the sites have two different things like two different settlement Fine. One settlement was the citadel. Fine. And one settlement was your lower town. Fine. One settlement was your citadel and another settlement was your lower town. So lower town, so in some cities or in some complexes like Lothal and Sutka Gandor, the upper town used to be like this and lower town used to be on this so it used to be on some kind of raised platform sort of thing fine so it should be uh, it was on the raised platform sort of things and the lower town was used to be at a lower level fine so in some cities and this was like a uh, citadel was uh citadel was fortified and the lower town was also 45 but in some places like Lothal and Sutka Gandor, we find like these complexes were not separate. These were fortified like these were. This is your citadel. This is your lower town. And these whole, both the things are present in the same settlement. They are not separated from each other by the boundaries or by any kind of fortification so this uh, by this difference sutka gandor and lothal becomes very very important fine so we find two differences like we find two settlement in almost every site except dhola vira now we come the uh, now we come to dhola vira so i uh, so i told you the citadel this is a lower town the citadel was fortified the lower town was 40 fine fine but in dhola vira what happened we find the three different settlement fine we find three different settlement one is your citadel another is your middle town and another is your lower town fine so this makes dhola vira very important why because in everywhere because in every settlement or in every city we find that where we find two different uh, like we find two different uh, settlements or you can say the uh, division in the architecture fine generally agar hum kahe to we find division in the architecture like uh, citadel middle town and lower town fine so uh, citadel middle uh, uh, like citadel and the lower town but in dhola vira what we find we find that the settlement was divided into three parts that was your citadel uh, middle town and lower town fine so this makes dhola vira very very important now we see on the base we see the difference in the raw material raw material in the sense like if we talk about the villages or if we talk about the cities so the difference between these two or uh, like village and the city was on the basis of your raw material cities used when cities were built or you can say the when we find the houses of cities they were built on the uh, they were built by the 
सन ड्राइड सन ड्राइड ब्रिक्स और दी ड्राइड और यू कैन से बेक्ड ब्रिक्स सो व्हेन बेक्ड ब्रिक्स आर यूज दे आर मोर स्ट्रॉंग फाइन बिकॉज दे आर बिकॉज दे आर बेक्ड सो इट हैज काइंड ऑफ गेन अ लॉट ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ एंड दे कैन रिटेन और दे कैन वेन यू कंस्ट्रक्ट अ हाउस इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू make or to use baked bricks because they are very very strong so the on the basis of raw material we find the differences in the uh, cities and the houses so in house the in the in villages we find that the cities or the the sorry the houses were built of uh, they were built up of uh, uh, sun right or uh, as a simple mud bricks fine it was not a baked it was like mud bricks which was not of very very important like uh, which uh, does not have a lot of strength but when we talk about uh, cities so we find like we find the sun dried and uh, bricks that uh, that were baked fine burnt or basically basically they were baked bricks fine as i told you when we when we were studying the harappan and indus valley civilization in the first slide we uh, in the first slide i told you about the ratio of uh, we find the ratio of uh, the bricks so on the ratio of bricks the ratio is very very important fine from the question also from the exam point of view these ratios are very very important so these ratios are were of 1 is to 2 is to 4 so 1 is to 2 is to 4 was the ratio so like in some villages we don't find this uh, the bricks of this ratio but more or less in every settlement or in every site we find the bricks that was of this of this particular ratio that is 1 is to 2 is to 4 and then comes your drainage system that is very very attracting uh, historians were very much attracted by the drainage system of indus valley civilization they were very much attracted by the drainage system of indus valley civilization it was a very planned drainage system fine planned drainage system and what does this mean this means that they were aware of the uh, you can say diseases that were caused because of uh, the unhygienic condition or unsanitization so they uh, they basically they uh, first plan the streets and the drains and then they built on the or uh, then they built houses on them now we come to site we come to mohan jodaro mohan jodaro very very important a movie is also made on mohan jodaro but that flop so no problem <laughs> we will study mohan jodaro what was actually mohan jodaro so sabse important thing is the most important thing whenever you are studying a site fine so whenever you are studying a site it is very important like river so who was the excavator of mohan jodaro R D Banerjee, fine excavator. Mohan Jodaro was excavated by the uh, R D Banerjee, and Harappa was excavated by Harappa was excavated by the Dayaram Sahan, fine. So river is very important. Like you should know on which bank of river or on which on the bank of which river this particular site is situated. So it was situated on the river Indus. fine so uh, you can say important features in questions it is oftenly uh, like it is uh, frequently asked like what was the important feature if you get the question from mohan jodar what they will ask will they uh, will they ask you like does this belongs to indus valley civilization or uh, harappan uh, or it belongs to neo chalcolithic culture no they will ask you like uh, they will ask you what is the important feature they will give you some features like uh, the earliest example of or the earliest technique of waterproofing comes from this particular site so what uh, which particular site mohan jodaro from mohan jodaro we get the evidence of earliest technique of waterproofing in the world we do not find that technique ever like uh, anywhere in the world so this makes this particular site very very important so this is how you will study each and every site even if you are studying by yourself fine so <coughs> 
so uh, the important features so when we come to mohan jodaro we see the general features were the citadel and the lower the lower town fine so it had the citadel it had the lower town fine this is your lower town the citadel was also fortified and the lower town was also fortified fine now important thing on the citadel we find the in the citadel we find the great path we find granary fine we find house of we find house of priest fine we find house to house of pre, uh, priest and then we also find granary great path house of priest houses for the laborers for laborers or labor houses fine so in the sita del we find the we find these through uh, these two things fine so now when we talk about great bath fine when we talk about great a uh, great bath what does it actually means see we are talking about a uh, period of around 5000 bce fine so today we are not able to make our houses and ceilings waterproof सीलन जो कहते हैं वो हो ही जाती है घरों में वी आर नॉट एबल टू प्रिवेंट दैट फाइन सो बट हाउ कम पीपल ऑफ लाइक फाइव थाउजेंड ईयर्स अगो दे नो द टेक्निक ऑफ वॉटर प्रूफिंग दे नो द टेक्निक ऑफ वॉटर प्रूफिंग सो वट दे यूज दे यूज बिटुमेन दे न्यू दैट bitumen will help them bitumen will help them to make water proof so suppose this is the floor of the great bath they used to apply bitumen at this particular edge so that water does not flow out fine water does not flow out and if we talk about the blocks also fine so when it was made it was made up of bricks so when it was made up of bricks the bricks was also waterproof it was not that uh, the bricks was made of different kind of material it was said that it was it was that uh, it was that when the bricks were pasted when we when you apply some material to paste the bricks that was made very that was made very fine and that ensured that uh, the that ensured that the uh, water does not flow out and then if we talk about an at certain particular point they had the outlet fine they have they had the outlet so when they had the outlet it shows that people knew the technique of waterproofing they knew that water if the water will clog it will create problem and whole structure will be destroyed so they had outlet also outlet to uh, so outlet to allow the water to get off the uh, get off the great bath fine so when we talk about granary what does granary represent granary represent the surplus of food fine suppose if you are not able to produce surplus food what will you do fine the granary is of no use so because you uh, because the people of indus valley civilization they produced the surplus food and that is why they were able to so that is why they made the granaries to store the food so to store the food then one more feature that is your assembly hall fine so in the south of the citadel suppose this is your citadel so it is basically referred to as the citadel is your urban town fine sorry it is your upper town fine it is your 
upper town so in the south of citadel there used to be a assembly hall where it is it shows that where people it was a kind of structure where people used to come they used to meet and they used to assemble or to like there must have been some kind of discussions happened during that particular period of time fine so see uh, like in the citadel some houses were like small fine and some houses were like too big some houses were like medium size so the size of the houses vary so what like people in today also rich people have bigger house fine so during that time also so that is why we like uh, because of this we interpret that the big houses or the difference in houses shows the difference in in status fine status fine so we are basically what we are doing we we are studying the social structure of the particular civilization fine so we are studying the structure of particular uh, social uh, structure of particular civilization that they had some kind of great great bath that was used for ritual practices so it shows the religious aspect of that particular civilization when we talk about the difference in houses then we interpret it as the difference in wealth maybe indicate this that the difference in houses maybe indicates the difference in wealth fine and then a lot of a lot of shops also have been found like how do we recognize like suppose if there is a this this is your settlement that you found this settlement is 5000 6000 bc old so uh, 6000 years old so how will you interpret how will you interpret that as it is mentioned like there were shops of in the lower town there were shops of working uh peats men dyeing pottery making shells and all these all these things we find like suppose if there is a room the in the rooms we have found a lot of like finished unfinished shells we have found a lot of unfinished finished beads unfinished finished um, weights and measurements so from this if you are uh, if you are getting a particular thing from a particular place that means that uh, that place has a uh, you can say this uh, that particular thing was made on that place because there are finished unfinished goods so it represents this so from there we interpret like these uh, these uh, you can say houses must have belonged to the merchant family or uh, or from the uh, uh, artisan family who used to make the uh, copper thing or uh, made up of uh, like things made up of copper things uh, like the uh, the shop that was used for dyeing or that was used for making pottery or that was used to uh, that was used to make the uh, that was used to make uh, shells weights and measurements etc fine and now comes our well 700 wells have been found from the mohenjodaro the site of mohenjodaro has given us 700 wells so what does this represent it represents that every house had its own well and like suppose like two three houses shared some kind of well also so you can say like there were a lot of the water it there was no scarcity of water during that time there was a lot of you can say there was huge amount of water when i told you when i showed you the map it was the indus plain that was one of the most fertile plain so uh, that supported agriculture also now we come to uh, now we come to our site which is your chanhun dar Chanundaro is important because it was it has the bead making factory we call it as the bead making factory it was very very important site that used to yield the craft thing fine or the uh, like things made up of uh, you can say we find a lot of uh, shells from this site a lot of beads from this site so people say that uh, or the historians say that these sites and uh, these artifacts or these ornaments were made over here in chanundaro and after like after it was like uh, finished making they used to uh, distribute it or they used to trade it from trade it to different lands outside the Harappan civilization or inside or within the Harappan civilization. See, when we talk about Harappan civilization, it is the uh, well-planned and urban civilization of that particular time. But it does not mean that this was the only civilization that existed during that time. Parallelly, Mesopotamia, Egyptian civilization, and Harappan civilization, all these civilization coexisted, or you can say, existed at the same. time so these are the contemporary civilizations of that particular time fine so it was the important center for uh, it was the important center for 
craft activity fine so chanundaro important craft making center fine important craft making center so what happened like as i told you it was the it was uh, the important craft making center and then we find bead factory see bead factory very very important from where we get the evidence of bead factory we get the evidence from the chanhun daro fine so the houses yielded a lot of raw material so uh, like in from the every particular house from every house we have uh, we have yielded or we have got the evidence of uh, the raw material that was used to make the craft fine so we find the evidence of bead making as i told you there was a citadel there was a lower town so in this in this site we have not found the citadel or the lower town fine we have just found one particular thing one particular site fine no fortification no division no upper town no lower town no citadel no lower town just a settlement that was not fortified that was not divided fine that was not divided fine so from this point of view this particular site is important harappa harappa is on the bank of river ravi it is on the bank of river ravi and why it is important it is important from this point that it was the first site to be excavated so harappa was the first i to be excavated and from harappa we have found the evidence of workshops and all those things and we have found the workmen quarter from the harappa fine so it has the citadel fortified citadel it has the lower town fortified lower town we have find the we have found granary so in the citadel there were six granaries we have found six granaries from the uh, from this particular site harappan site there was the in this particular in this particular citadel only we have found the workmen's or workers quarter fine we have found workers quarter so and this was this is important because it was the first site to be excavated to be excavated and it was excavated by it was excavated by ardi banerji or daya ram sahani daya ram sahani fine <coughs> very very important fine uh, the river is very important it is on the bank of river ravi now we come to our another site that is kali bangan kali bangan itself tells us about that kali bangan means the black bangle so why it is known as kali bangan it is known as kali bangan because on the mount fine on the mount of kali bangan a lot of like it was surrounded by the black bangles so it tells us about that the kali bangan was the uh it was the most important center for making the uh, for making the black bangles or bangle making was the important craft of kali bangan site fine so this site is important because it was the you can say the center for making center for making our bangle cute cute bangles fine it is named so because of a lot of black bangles 
found fine because a lot of black mangles found there fine and we have also yielded we have also yielded pyre altars fine pyre altars or havan kund fine fire altars or havan kund so if we talk about like uh, uh, ji havan kund the fire altars are why they are used they are used for havans when we practice the ritual practices and all so it is said that fire altars must have been used for the religious practices fine and for the religious practices and, and a lot of fire altars have been found from this particular side fine so bangle making important craft we have found ivory cone a copper buffalo also so this makes this site very very important fine so the general feature lower town upper town the citadel and the lower town both were fortified we have found that particular uh, that particular settlement in the kalibangan itself it is on the bank of river ghaggar it is uh, important because it was the important center for making the bangles or you can specifically black bangles and that is why we call it as the black bangle kali bangan which stands for the black bangle fine so this is all about kali bangan then we come to banavali banavali it is a site in haryana and it is the it is on the bank of tributary of river uh, a tributary bhagwo bhagwo jo hai wo uh, bhagwo river sorry it is on the bank uh, it is uh, it is in haryana sorry i'm so sorry it is in haryana and rangoi river the river is rangoi so not rangoli you can say if you want to remember like harappa we will remember harappa we will remember mohanjodaro fine and so rangoli banali so in diwali we make rangoli so rangoli banali it means the banavali the site banavali is on the bank of river rangoi fine so this is the trick from where you can like trick uh, with which you can remember the site banavali is on the river rangoi fine then see we have not yielded or we have not found any plow plow not found plow not found in indus valley civilization we have not found plow fine but we have found toy plow what does it mean if we find like suppose if we do not find the plow but we have found the model of terracotta model of plow or the toy plow we have found the toy cars also the terracotta models of toy cars what does this mean this means like this means that it is uh, uh, this means that the actually people used people used the plow for their agriculture people used the plow uh, they used the uh, the carts for trading and kalibangan is also important because we have found the uh, we have found the plowed field fine so this is a fine this is a point we have found the evidence of plowed field we have found the evidence of plowed field from kalibangan fine so uh, so i was telling you about the plow uh, the to the toy actually basically we have not see a lot of sites have not been discovered yet fine a lot of sites has not been excavated yet and a lot of things what happened in the like uh, the story goes back to the construction of railways when british uh, when britishers started the construction of railways they came across such sites but they do not found the uh, but they do not understood the importance fine when cunin gum comes he when cunin gum comes uh, sorry when cunin gum comes and he found the seals then he says like okay fine he found it fascinating and he says okay fine let's just examine so with that the uh, the with that the whole process of indus valley civilization excavation of harappa and all these things started earlier what happened they used to 
uh, what they they used to make uh, they used to make the railway lines out of the bricks of harappan cities they used the bricks to construct their railways they found oh oh la la we found this uh, bricks in free so why not use it in making the railway and all those things whichever whatever they wanted to construct or they wanted to make so because of this because of the advent of britishers also a lot of sites have been destroyed because they could not understand they could not understand the significance if we talk about like if we talk about the deities deities with eight hands deities uh, deities with uh, a human figure like lower body of humans and upper body of the upper body of your uh, you can say any kind of animal suppose if we talk about the avatar of uh, the avatar of kali fine if we talk about the avatar of uh, narsing uh, which is the avatar of vishnu so they used to get scared like what is this they used to get scared they could not uh, say, uh, they could not resemble that uh, them with those pictures so they did not because some people understood fine they were the britishers only those understood the significance of these sites and these seals and then the excavation happened then and then uh, earlier what happened so uh, for like uh, for the people who come to india or the for the people who come to specifically britishers they used to tell us like we were the barbarians fine we were barbaric and we do not have any kind of knowledge we were like out of our senses we do not have anything uh, so our ancestors was also barbaric so they ruled on this policy that they will come and they will make us civilized but then with the with the excavation and with the you can say with these sites uh, when the excavation happened then they to then it was like no 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 dude you are not the earliest civilization we are the earliest we are the earliest civilization we know the we know uh, early our ancestors knew the town planning our ancestors knew how to make those buildings and structures that could last for 5000 years it is a huge amount it is a huge time frame so it was like that so then they admitted okay fine you are also one of the civilized cities or civilized uh, civilizations and because uh, because of like because of the weather condition the most important thing is like weather condition uh, a lot of things are destroyed and because of the people not knowing the importance of such buildings and structures the knowledge was all the structures were also or a lot of our history was also destroyed fine so we do not find any kind of plow we do not find any kind of cart but we do find toy cards we do find uh, pl uh, the toy plow so terracotta model of plow has been found from the banavali and when we talk about this when we talk about this sita den and the lower town from the lower town we have found the seals fine so we do not find the seal from the sita den or the upper town we find the seal from the uh, we find the seal from the lower